want to make an eclipse. Hey guys, welcome back to That's by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender once again, taking a look at how to create a solar eclipse effect. A little 2D motion graphic type of thing. I thought it'd be pretty fun. So uh, we're going to get started today. I'm going to go ahead and uh, box select our, uh, our cube and our lamp by hitting B on my keyboard. Dragging a box like that and hitting delete on my keyboard and get rid getting rid of that. With our camera selected, I'm going to hit Alt-G and Alt-R to clear the camera's rotation and location. RZ90, RX90, sorry. Uh, and left click to confirm this, the movement. And we're going to drag that back behind the grid. Hit 0 on my numpad to go into the camera's view. Now that we're all set up, I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift-A on my uh, keyboard. And we're going to add in a circle. And this circle will over here on the side. We'll change a few settings. This circle will have a fill type of Nagan or Ngan and we'll change the vertices to 64 instead of 32. You can see we have a much more high resolution circle than 32. So uh, that is nice. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this uh, circle by hitting RX90 on my keyboard. Once again, zero to go into the camera's view. I will now take this opportunity to go ahead and with our camera, I'll go to the camera settings over here on the right hand side and change to orthographic. I'll change the orthographic scale down to about 12 even. Uh, that's pretty good. All right. Uh, I'm also going to turn on border and I'm going to hit this little plus button to get rid of the grid because we don't need that and it's bothering me. All right. <laughs> Now that we have all that set up, I want to go ahead and do the mater materials. Materials? Uh, I want to go ahead and do the materials really quickly. We'll go ahead and add in. I want to do this in cycles render, by the way. So I'll switch to cycles. Uh, and get rid of that. And uh, I'll add, I'll grab this material, the default material. Hit use nodes, and I'll change this color to an emission shader. And maybe we'll bump, or maybe we'll turn the color to a very slight blue. Something like that. I will go ahead and hit Shift D on my keyboard and right click to cancel the movement. I'll go ahead and hit 5 3 on my numpad to go into the side view. And now, very, very, I'll zoom in very, very close. And uh, as close as we can get, this is as far as we can go. And I will go ahead and move this to about right there. Uh, just a little bit up above the other circle. I'm going to go ahead and hit this 3 button on the, on the material and I'm going to go ahead and change the surface uh, shader to uh, b -b 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 diffuse and we're going to go ahead and change this color to solid black um, and we're also going to go ahead and go to our world settings and change this to solid black as well so in our camera's view uh, if I were to go ahead and render this, you can see that we can see absolutely nothing. The reason is because our black sphere is covering up our white sphere. So what I can do is I can go ahead and move that off to the right-hand side and render it again. You can see we have like a half crescent moon kind of thing, which is really, really cool looking. So well, I'll go ahead and go to my camera, my render settings, and I'll put that from 50 to all the way up to 100. Uh, I'll make sure our sphere is exactly in the center. This is very important. So I'll go to frame 70 for this, and I'll hit I on my keyboard and location. Then I'll go back to frame 0 or frame 1, whatever you're doing, and I'll move this circle way off to the side here. Um, and then we will go ahead and I'll hit uh, I location. So now if we play this, our sphere gets covered up. Of course, an eclipse is not that fast. So that's much nicer. You can see if I were to pause it there and render this, you can see we have that nice sliver of a crescent moon. The only problem is what you're seeing is that we have a problem with uh, it's now clipping because they're exactly on the same level. Because when I when I put all of these axes uh, to zero, uh, we actually got rid of the Y value. So I go ahead and I'll put that back. That was something like uh, just put this on on negative uh, one. And also add the uh, location keyframe once again, and the same thing for this keyframe as well. We'll go ahead and negative one. Um, and the reason this will work and won't give you a weird perspective is because we put the camera in orthographic. Uh, and if we didn't, then it would be really, really strange. We're going to open up the node editor by dragging this uh, corner down here, splitting our view into two and changing this to the node editor. I'll go ahead and... Um, and we will uh, go to this uh, render tab right here. This is uh, for compositing. 
This is all the entire scenes nodes. We hit use nodes, um, and we will go ahead and drag these apart just a little bit. I'll go ahead and hit add here, and we will add in an output viewer node so we can actually see what we're doing behind the um, behind the our, our background here. We'll also hit on backdrop and auto render. So now uh, the one thing we're gonna want to keep in mind: I've disconnected the composite node we're gonna have to remember to put that back on or else it will render as solid black so um and we'll do uh glare we'll do glare and we'll change this from streaks to fog glow and what we'll have now as you can see when it renders you can see well it's uh not enough threshold so we'll, we'll drop the threshold down maybe we'll go ahead and put this on high quality it'll get a bit, a bit smaller but it is much more smooth if you can't tell so We'll go ahead and duplicate our glare node, and we'll put that right there. We'll go ahead and change this to streaks, and we'll change the streak amount to 2. Change the iteration to like 5 or something. There we go. So we have a bit of streaks right there, which is pretty cool looking. And I want to add one more thing. We'll add our text finally. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, uh, we'll add in Shift A text with RX90 on our keyboard. Uh, trying to get through this as quickly as possible so we can get everything done by the way we'll go ahead and uh, go to the font tab over here on the right hand side and we will change the font right here with this uh, little folder icon I've chosen a font called carbon black and I'll go ahead and I'll scale this down a bit by hitting SZ to uh, to make it a bit thinner um, and I'll change I'll scroll down here and I'll change the spacing for the uh, letters and I'll make the letters a bit more spaced out I'll hit S to scale it down something like that right and have it kind of just over top of uh, of the moon there well of the over the sun rather uh, and uh, we'll change the text to nothing other than touch by Kai <laughs> um, and I'll scale that down like that it's, it's really really thin really sleek perhaps what we can do is I'll put this above both of them and then I'll make this solid white so you can only see it I'll make it the same color as the moon so right so this is what we have so far so if I go ahead and I were to take a look at this we take a look at this you wouldn't be able to see anything because they're both the same color uh, now once the second sphere goes over top then the letters reveal and it looks really pretty cool so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure we hook up the composite node as well because if you don't it will render as solid black and it'll be very very tedious to have to render your entire thing again this is quite far away now it's it's very nice because it's small and minimal and stuff like that but it's it's a bit sm it's a bit small on the smaller side so I'm gonna go ahead and animate the camera we're gonna animate this to our in frame will be 150 and the orthographic scale will be animated so on the first on the first frame, I'll hit, I'll hover my cursor over top of the orthographic scale and, and hit I, and then we'll go to the last frame, and we'll scale it in a little bit to about 8.8, .8, and we'll hit I once again. So we have this bit of an animation with the camera now. It kind of goes in a little bit like that, looking pretty good. I think it might zoom in just a bit too much, so we'll go ahead and change that to 10 instead of 8. All right, so the last thing I want to do is we'll add in one plane. We'll hit uh, Shift-C to make sure our cursor is in the center. Hit Mesh, Plane. Uh, and RX90, we'll go ahead and move this above everything, about right there. We'll make it solid black as well, above everything. Um, and what I'll do now is we will go ahead and go back into the camera's view. We'll move this plane up about right there. We'll try and go about half the way of the letter, so about right there. GZ to move it just on the Z-axis, by the way. I will start this on frame... Uh, 130 hit I location uh, and then on frame 150 I want it to be all the way down there so on 130 we'll move it up to about right there so it's not in the way uh, we need to move it all the way out of the way of the moon and then location and then on frame 150 it should be all the way gone and we'll duplicate this and put it underneath the um, underneath the the words as well so I'll hit automatic keyframing on and I'll duplicate our uh, our our plane and I'll move it down here instead and then for this we will go ahead and make sure this uh, overlaps the rest of the letters getting rid of them completely all right so that looks pretty good all right so that is that I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial uh, and of course like I said make sure you can hook up that composite node but that is going to be it for today's tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new today. Let me know what you want to see next time. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, bye-bye.